that I started sending around. Um, my hope is that by the end of my five minutes, just about everybody has one. Uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about Play With Your Math, which is uh, my way of sharing my favorite problems with my students and my colleagues and with the Midboss community. Um, I started teaching in 2012 at Chelsea High School, which is just north of Boston. Uh, my classroom was over there, and the rest of the math department was over there. So as you can imagine, I did not do a whole lot of collaborating. Uh, but in my second year, they moved me down to the math wing, and I started to actually talk to the other teachers. We started uh, sharing resources with each other, and this was actually the same time that I discovered the Midboss community. Um, and so we started, like, we had all of these ideas that we were just so excited to share with each other. Um, and we started, uh, like, sharing problems with each other, too. And it wasn't like, here's a great problem for your class. It was like, here's a problem that I really enjoyed doing. I want you to try it, too. And we'd share our strategies with each other and realize that like the way I solved it wasn't like the whole solution. Um, and so we went, I went back to the drawing board and we just had a lot of fun playing with our problems. Uh, one of the people I was working with, um, who, his name is Cece, um, and she really enjoyed playing with these problems so much that she wanted to start uh, bringing our students into the fold. She wanted to share the fun that we were having as teachers doing problems with our students, uh, but not like trying to force it into our curriculum. She wanted to engage our students in some recreational mathematics. Uh, so she went home one night and made this poster, trying to invite uh, our students to play with this problem along with us. Uh, maybe she'd give them some extra credit or something, but there wasn't a whole lot of structure in her design. Uh, she sent me this poster and was like, hey, what do you think? And I was like, this is awesome. I want in. Uh, how can I help? Like, I want to put this in my classroom too. Um, and I looked at this poster more and more and I realized that there was just a lot of words there. Uh, so I did what I could and I made a new version of the poster looks something like this. And then we just started sending it back and forth over and over again, coming up with new, newer and newer versions until finally we settled on a poster that looked like this. Uh, over the course of this process, we just had this incredible dialogue about what we loved about playing with math problems and what criteria we thought made a problem perfect for our students to play along with us. Uh, we decided that we needed a poster that students would just want to run over and look at. Like the, the visual design was a key component. Uh, we also decided that we wanted to use as few words as possible, because we know that our students don't love reading all the words in the problem. Uh, we also decided that we wanted to engage the entire school in the problem. So the problem had to be accessible enough for our ninth graders to play with it, and challenging enough for our 12th graders. Uh, and over time, we even got some of our administrators to play with them. Uh, and most importantly, we wanted the problems to be something that you couldn't just figure out on the first try. We wanted it to be something that you tried and failed and tried again and started to develop a strategy to figure out. This is some of our students working on it at like five o'clock on a Friday. Uh, at the end of that school year, we took all our problems and we put them on a website and just hoped that somebody would find it. <laughs> Eventually, oh, actually, first we put them in our hallway. We put up a whole bunch of student work and it was just really exciting to have a whole bunch of people working on it. Um, if you go to the website, you can find some of the student work. Uh, don't read this too closely or it might spoil the problem, but this is a student who wasn't doing the work for my class, who just decided to like really run with this problem. But yeah, we put the problems online and the response was really exciting. Um, it just uh, it was really encouraging to get positive feedback um, from other people. 
Uh, there were a couple people who blogged about using the problems. Uh, we had somebody who made their own version and sent us a couple of ideas for problems. Uh, and we had some teachers who took it and did it in their own classrooms in ways that we hadn't even thought of. Like this one where it's in, where it's laminated and they're writing on the whiteboard markers. Um, so this was like two and a half years ago at this point. Uh, and then uh, my school went through a lot of turnover. I ended up in a leadership position. <laughs> and I pretty much stopped playing with math problems for two years. I had no time to do them myself or to design posters. Um, and it was really frustrating. But uh, I'm excited to share that uh, earlier this summer, I got together with CC and we revamped our website and we added two new problems to it for the first time in more than two years. Uh, and in particular, I would like to invite everybody to try problem 14, which is called eightfold. The goal is to fold the piece of paper you have so that the number one is on top of the number two, is on top of the number three, and so on, with eight on the bottom. All right, I'm not going to wait for you to finish because I'm only supposed to have five minutes, but uh, if you do figure that out, uh, let me know, and I have a handful of copies of the second version, which is a little bit more challenging. All right, you can also find these on the website. Thank you. Okay, David Petro is coming up next.